David Humphrey, and I'm the Vice President of Investor Relations for Art Best Corporation in Fort Smith. This year I'm serving as the Chairman of the Board of Economics Arkansas, and I'm proud to welcome you to this, today's event. The mission of Economics Arkansas is to promote economic literacy and the economic way of thinking to K-12 students in Arkansas by empowering educators to teach the fourth R, real-life economics. I became involved with the organization because my wife Sheila is a first grade teacher in Fort Smith who is able to teach economics to her students because of the help and encouragement of Economics Arkansas. Through the support of this wonderful organization, I have seen first grade entrepreneurs make a presentation to a bank president asking for his bank to loan money to their classroom business and I can tell you they paid the full amount back in 17 days with interest and used the profits they made to purchase needed items for their school and community. I've seen first grade entrepreneurs meet with a private investor in his company's boardroom to ask for a personal financial investment in their business while discussing what collateral they were willing to offer him. They very reluctantly committed their Nintendo Wii game as their collateral. I've seen first grade entrepreneurs fill out applications for jobs in one of the six departments in their classroom business. I've seen first grade entrepreneurs go through a job interview while wearing their Sunday best. I've seen first grade entrepreneurs balance their classroom checkbook and gasp when the first bills came in and they realized the sales and marketing department had to get on the stick in order to generate some much needed revenue. I'm describing real life economic experiences that first graders have lived through and now understand because of how Economics Arkansas empowers our state's teachers to share these life changing concepts and experiences that most of us in this room never thought of or understood in K through 12. Your attendance today here helps Economics Arkansas continue that great mission. Today we are extremely honored to be presenting the Leadership and Free Enterprise Award to honor the Ford family legacy. 53 years ago, Dr. Arch Ford, Arkansas Department of Education Commissioner, had a vision. He understood the long-term impact of K through 12 economic literacy would have on individual lives and, in, and on our state. His vision was realized in 1962 with the formation of the Arkansas State Council on Economic Education, which today is Economics Arkansas. Dr. Ford appointed Dr. Bessie B. Moore to develop the program, and the rest is history. Dr. Ford clearly inspired his son, Joe Ford, and grandson, Scott Ford, as they have made significant contributions to the state as entrepreneurs and leaders of free enterprise. You will learn more about the Ford family legacy shortly, but it's now my pleasure to recognize several special guests and major sponsors of this event. Uh, I want to introduce the folks at the head table. Joe Ford, chairman of West Rock Group. Scott Ford, CEO of the West Rock Group. Warren Stevens, chairman, president, and CEO of Stevens Incorporated. Randy Zook, president and CEO of the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce, and he's also the, e the Economics Arkansas Board Vice Chair. And then on the end there, the lady that kind of helps make all this happen is Sue Owens, Executive Director of Economics Arkansas. Accepting the Leadership and Free Enterprise Award on behalf of the Ford Family Legacy will be Joe and Scott Ford, who I've already introduced, but other members of the Ford Family here with us today include Joe Ellen Ford, I'm not sure where they are, Dee Dee Ford, and Sam Ford. We're actually, we're very excited to have you here. Uh, so we appreciate that. It's now time to recognize our sponsors, and we've got several, and we're very pleased to have them. We want to thank our generous silver sponsors who are listed in your printed program and who are also listed on the rolling PowerPoint slides you've been seeing on the screens, and uh, those will be shown throughout lunch. This is the first time we've hosted an event where we had 23 major sponsors, and I think that just speaks to the recognition of how valuable this organization is, and this tells you a lot also about the esteem, the esteem held for the Ford family. The uh, free enterprise sponsors, will you please stand as I call your name, Eamon and Kay Mahoney, <laughs> uh, 
and also windscreen. Just give them a hand. Our Bessie B. Moore Hero Sponsors, will you please stand as I'll call your name, the Oaklawn Racing and Gaming Group, and, Ar and also Arkansas Business. Uh, the Platinum Sponsors, will you please stand and continue standing as I'll call your company name. Will you please hold your applause till I get everybody introduced. The Arkansas Capital Corporation Group, the McClarty Companies, the Stevens Group, Stevens Incorporated, Bear State Financial, the Circumference Group, Martin Wilburn Partners, West Rock Coffee, and Energy. So let's give that group a big hand of applause, round of applause. Our gold sponsors, and will you please stand as I read your name, and please hold your applause till we get everybody introduced. AT&T, the UALR College of Business, Tipton Hurst, the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce, Eric Rob Isaac, Merrill Lynch Wealth Management, the Wooten Family Trust, Arkansas Children's Hospital, Philander Smith College, and Irwin and Company. Let's give that group a round of applause. I think throughout the, the room we've got uh, Economics Arkansas board members. If you're on the board of Economics Arkansas, please stand and be recognized. <laughs> I want to, in particular, thank you. I want to, in particular, recognize Jim Wooten, who has uh, been on the board 36 years, and Dr. Jim Rollins, who has been on the board 20, 31 years, and they are lifetime board members. Let's give them a hand. We have a couple of Economics Arkansas Center directors here I want to recognize. Dr. Rita Luttrell, she's at the Bessie B. Moore Center in the UA Walton of, uh, College of, of Business. Please stand, Rita. And also Dr. Jennifer Logan, uh, she's the Center Director of Southern Arkansas University. Let's give her a, those ladies a hand. We've got uh, three Economics Arkansas Lifetime Achievement recipients. These are retired classroom educators who served as master economics teachers for over 20 years, Melody Key, Bruce Vick, and Stanley Wells. Let's give them a hand. I've got some special guests that I want to mention as well. Melody Mortimer, she's president of Securities Industry and Financial Markets Association. Uh, that's the entity that owns our largest program, the, the stock market game, and I believe the, the banquet for that group was yesterday, or the luncheon was yesterday, isn't that right, Steve? I want to thank her. We've got Governor Asa Hutchison who will be here shortly, and we, uh, we appreciate his attendance. We also want to recognize Dorothy Gillum from the Arkansas Department of Education. She was hired originally by Dr. Arch Ford in the early 60s and is now working for her 18th education uh, commissioner. So we thank her for being here pretty special. And we also, um, we also have two state council directors and a program director attending this event from Texas, Mississippi, and Kentucky. And then finally, we've got uh, K through 12 school districts and schools represented at the luncheon today. If you'll stand from El Dorado, from BB, from the East M schools, from Little Rock, from Little Rock Christian, from Greenbrier, and finally from a Pulaski County Special School District. So let's give them a big hand. And then finally, this, this event just would not come off if it weren't for the volunteers and the Economics Arkansas staff. I can tell you there's not very many on that staff, but they do a wonderful job, and you're, you're getting to benefit from that today. So if you are a volunteer or on the Economics Arkansas staff, and Sue, I want Sue to stand as well. Uh, please, please stand and give them a round of applause for this wonderful event today. We want to thank you for joining us today as we honor this legendary Arkansas family, and I hope you enjoy lunch. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please. I hate to interrupt all these good conversations that are going on, but before I make my remarks, I'd like to recognize these spectacular flowers uh, brought to us today by our friends at Tipton Hearst. Thank you, Stacy. And yes, that is West Rock coffee you're enjoying, so. Have plenty of it, as Scott would say. We're here today to celebrate the extraordinary contributions to the Arkansas story by three generations of a remarkable family, the Fords. Dr. Arch Ford, his son Joe Ford, and his son Scott Ford. What a threesome. All successful in their chosen fields and all three admired and respected for their uncommon grace while achieving their success. We all know that Arkansas has a rich history of families that make great things happen and leave wonderful contributions to mark their efforts. <clears throat> Today's honorees are fully deserving, deserving of one whole chapter in the who's who of Arkansas history for a variety of singular accomplishments. First, Dr. Arch Ford. Not only the father of economics Arkansas, but also the longest serving commissioner of education in Arkansas history. 26 years as commissioner, serving under six different governors. And to that point, he was quoted as saying, I've never understood people who can't get along with governors. I've found them easy to work with. They just want you to do a good job and to cooperate with their objectives. Johnny Key, here is your role model. <laughs> and Governor Hutchinson, I commend that quote to you for your next cabinet meeting. And to cooperate with their objectives. You'll hear more about the legacy of progress under his direction from some of his colleagues in the video in just a few minutes. Dr. Ford, Arch as he preferred, worked his way from the classroom to the boardroom over a lifelong career devoted to educating Arkansas school children. His impact on the state's economic growth would be difficult to measure, but it surely was significant as more kids graduated from high school, went on to college and Votech schools, and improved their ability to earn more in our expanding economy. He was a schoolman through and through. Next, his son Joe. Graduated from the University of Arkansas in 1959, went to work at Allied Telephone Company as, among other things, a Yellow Pages sales rep. Smile if you remember phone books and Yellow Pages. <laughs> Indulge me if you don't. Joe's career paralleled the growth of Allied Telephone through the merger in 1983 with Mid-Continent Telephone. The combined companies then became Alltel and Joe became its president. He was named CEO in 1987 and chairman in 1991. Under his leadership, a predominantly rural Arkansas telephone company became a telecom giant with 13 million customers and nearly $10 billion in annual revenue. And oh yeah, on his spare time, he served two terms as a state senator along the way. Joe has served as a director of several national companies, including the Dial Corporation, Duke Power, Alltech, ASA, Beverly Enterprises, my personal favorite, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, as well as telecom industry groups. And oh yeah, that was Joe on national TV a few weeks back in the green jacket in his role as vice chairman of Augusta National. What a career. And speaking of national TV, yes, that was Scott Ford of Arkansas sitting next to Ben Affleck and Bill Gates in March in front of a congressional hearing recounting their efforts in Africa to spur economic development. Pretty heady company for Ben and Bill. <laughs> You'll hear more about Scott's efforts in Rwanda and the growth of West Rock Coffee. And like his father, Scott graduated from the U of A. Then he joined Merrill Lynch for a while before taking a job 
as Jack Stevens' assistant, a role he kept for several years. Talk about a real world <clears throat> MBA. Can you imagine the insights he gained working alongside Mr. Stevens? But the siren call of Altel finally got to him in 1996, and he moved rapidly through a series of increasingly responsible positions until being named CEO in 2002. He accelerated the company's shift to wireless technology to the point that it became the fifth largest U.S. wireless provider. Along the way, he managed two major acquisitions, Western Wireless and 360 Communications, that solidified Altel's market position. Then he led the $27 billion leveraged buyout of Altel and its subsequent sale to Verizon. Not a bad couple of, <clears throat> couple of days at the office and a fine outcome for lots of Arkansas shareholders as well. Outside Altel, Scott has served as a director of AT&T, the Little Rock branch of the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis, chairman of the Sailor Telecommunications and Internet Association, and a director of Tyson Foods. Now he's a partner in West Rock Capital Partners, a director of Bear State Financial, as well as founder of West Rock Coffee. And Lord only knows what all he's up to in Rwanda. Just know that he has President Kagame on his speed dial, and he's on that country's International Advisory Council. All this, and I think he's 53 years old. Nice start, Scott. No telling what you'll do by the time you're Joe's age. And now we have a tribute video with comments from friends and colleagues of all three Fords, and you're going to like this. Mr. Ford set the example, the model of excellence that the rest of us can only aspire to attain. Arch Force was steadfast, determined, fearless, dedicated to creating opportunities primarily for school children. He loved education. Uh, he was the first in his family to get a college degree. He thought everyone should have a chance at education. And money meant nothing to him as it compared to education. Over the years, as I've grown up in the educational profession and really became a student of his work, and I understand what it means uh, when he talked about more access for all kids, quality education for every child, and that has been a foundation from my perspective for all of the educators of our state who've been privileged to look back and to see the great contributions that he made throughout his professional life. Commissioner Ford was, was a visionary and he, he saw where uh, the deficiencies were and what we needed to do to correct them. Uh, just as he was a visionary in establishing uh, the Arkansas Economic Education Council, which is today Economics Arkansas. Well, I, I came uh, back home after my sophomore year at the University of Arkansas, and I'd taken some economic courses, and I told Ed that I'd taken these courses in economics and I enjoyed them, and, and it's, uh, you know, the way we operate in this country, it's based on economics. And, why didn't we do something like that in high school? Why did they have to be in college before I ever had anything like that? And uh, he thought about that, never said much, and talked to Bessie Moore, and Bessie Moore put economic education in Arkansas. And now we've got, I think, probably the best state economic system in the public schools of any state in the country. The greatest educational aid you can have to prospering in life is to understand economics. Once you understand the game and you understand markets, you get a real edge in being able to take care of your place in the world and how things fit together. I think Dr. Ford was attracted to economic education because, because it's so fundamental for people to understand the value of the dollar and the economics uh, of, of, of Arkansas and our nation are so vitally important that a, a deficiency in that area can, can uh, be a burden to a family. 
he set a record uh, in the United States, the longest serving chief state school officer. 25 years, a long time. Uh, he, he taught me that if it's right, it's right, and you stand for it. I would say he was my hero to hire me back in 1965 when my shade of green was not a popular color. When he hired me, the colored and white signs were still on the bathroom doors. Uh, and he had those signs painted before I reported to work that Monday morning. There always has to be somebody that will stand up and kick the chair back and tell it like it is. That's, that's the way he operated. He'd had this health scare and, was, and had been in a coma and was coming back. I was in my you know, early 20s and I thought, great opportunity to go get a little wisdom for life. I wish, you know, things that I'd thought of when we thought we were going to lose him that I wish I had done and I kind of got a second chance at that. So I went back to him and I said, you know, what is the most important thing you know, to mark a man's life? What's the most important thing? And I thought I would get, you know, a Bible story or a reference from that, and I did to some degree. That was an important part of his life. But he said, you know, the, the question you're asking, I think, is answered by perseverance. Perseverance. He said, you know, people that would have been successful often aren't because they quit. And he said, people that are successful in life, they all have that common denominator. They just persevere, whether it's going for them or against them. They just keep at it. He said, you'll Remember that, if you'll imprint that to your heart, it'll stand you well in life. Well, clearly the Ford family has had an enormous impact, made an enormous contribution in terms of the economic growth uh, in the state of Arkansas. When you look at faith first, and then you look at integrity and character, when, when you see that and you're uh, molded by that in your life. Uh, contrary to the political correctness today, you'll go a long way. Hardworking, brilliant entrepreneurs that uh, love their community, love their state, and accomplish great things, not for themselves, but for their whole community. Their whole life was a economic education uh, experience. The thing I remember most about him, full of love, full of intensity, you know, the, about the people that he loved and the things that he loved and, the, and, and just a wonderful sense of humor. I, I, I don't remember being in that home without uproarious laughter being the background noise. Well, I went by to see him one afternoon and said, Dad, I, I'll not be out this weekend. The University of Arkansas has given me a Distinguished Alumnus Award and I'm going up for a banquet and I won't be here that night and be gone and all that. And from his hospital bed he looked at me and a little smile on his face and a twinkle in his eyes he often could do. And he said, do you think they got your grades mixed up with mine? <laughs> so he had humor all the time. <laughs> and the thing about the Ford family is all of that greatness, if you will, and all of that economic well-being uh, has never gone to their head. There's a saying today as they were 40 years ago. The Ford family uh, has made an enormous difference. They've been the difference maker for good for thousands and thousands of Arkansans over time. And they have influenced the progress of our state in a way that will forever uh, be uh, appreciated. Good afternoon. It was truly a joy and privilege to make this video honoring the Ford family. And I had the pleasure to sit in on all of the interviews. And as you can imagine, it was a, <clears throat> a big challenge to take hours of priceless feedback and to edit it to just over seven minutes. And I want to thank Gabe Gentry, I know you're here somewhere, who created this video for us. Thank you. And by the way, Joe and Scott, we are going to provide your family the, all the footage because we realize that you're, that you're going to treasure all the feedback that was shared. 
As the fourth executive director to serve in the past 53 years, it's really been an honor to represent this mission for 11 years as director. And planning this event has truly been a highlight of my career as I learned how deeply re revered Dr. Ford was in the field of education and how revered the Ford family is by those that know them. So we thank all of you who are here today to help us honor their family. Um, and you are also, by the way, helping K-12 teachers, helping us provide K-12 teachers the materials and training that they need to integrate real life economics into the classroom. In the past 53 years, we've trained 80,000 teachers impacting over 4 million students, but we are just scratching the surface. We currently train 1,600 teachers annually, but we're not satisfied with that number, and you shouldn't be either. We must grow and expand our program, as the more teachers we train, the more students will be impacted. Um, I mentioned this to a group up in Northwest Arkansas last fall uh, when I was speaking. Many of you probably stop at that Cracker Barrel in Alma as you maybe go back and forth to Northwest Arkansas, one of my favorite places. A few months ago, I went in <clears throat> and I saw a picture that just stopped me in my tracks. The picture was a serene scene of a rocking chair on the front porch uh, of a cabin that was overlooking a beautiful body of water and there was an American flag draped on the porch, but what it said, sorry, everybody knows who knows me, I, I get them, I love our mission, so. What it said really captured my attention. It said, may I never wake up from the American dream. This is what we do at Economics Arkansas. This is what economic literacy does. It helps students see themselves as participants in our economy and not bystanders. So you can probably guess that picture is now hanging in my office. <laughs> our goal is to unleash, unleash the human capital in this state by helping students understand they can achieve their dreams by investing in their human capital, by teaching them good decision-making skills as their decisions will shape their lives, by helping them become financially literate, and by ensuring that they understand the global market that they're about to enter as an adult. Real life economic education is empowering. Before we move on in the program, I wanna share two things. <clears throat> if you find yourself inspired when you leave today and you want to support us beyond today's event, there's a little check uh, inserted in your program. There's various ways if you wanna support us to support our mission. What is not listed uh, is our board's recent initiative to build an endowment so we can not only sustain our program but expand it in the future. We're right now in a feasibility study and so if we move forward with that, it will be only fitting for Economics Arkansas to name it after our founder, Dr. Arch Ford, as he is the reason that we exist today. Today's Life Award that's gonna be presented to the Ford family stems from our Economics Art and Art Calendar program where students from around the state are invited to integrate an economic term into a work of art. And so we commissioned students from around the state to create the Life Award to honor the Fords. And so you will see the winning work of art on the large screen as it's being presented to Joe and Scott Ford by the student and teacher who are here at the conclusion of the event. And uh, also, Mr. Stevens, um, you're also going to receive a work of art that was created as our thank you gift for speaking, for speaking today. If you want to know how Economics Arkansas keeps our board members inspired, all we need to do is invite teachers and students to our board meetings to speak about what they're doing in the classroom of, with economics. So in, to inspire you today uh, are two of our superstar educators who we consider heroes. And first of all, if you don't think kindergarten students can learn economics, then you haven't met Debbie Shearer, who teaches at Baker Elementary School with the Pulaski County Special School District. So Debbie's coming on up, and with her are Gracie Faulkner, Nehemiah Love, Matt Marquez, and Aubrey Sane. Please help us welcome these <laughs> guests. Good afternoon. Again, my name is Debbie Sharon. I teach kindergarten at Baker Elementary in Pulaski County Special School District. Um, I know everyone in here knows Dr. Seuss, right? Okay, well, we're kind of getting ready. I want you to look at the person at your table and see if you can tell them the name of a Dr. Seuss book that you know. Okay? Y'all can tell them, okay? Then come back real quick. Okay. 
When I think of Dr. Seuss, I used to think about the fun rhymes and the fanciful characters in his books. But last year, I wanted to do something different. I wanted to teach economics while I read Dr. Seuss books. I knew that my kids had been exposed to Dr. Seuss, but they had not been exposed to economic concepts. So by combining both of these ideas, my project, Economics is on the Loose with Dr. Seuss, came to life. Come back, guys. <laughs> Matt. Hello, come on. Sorry about that. <laughs> They're going to tell you what they learned last year. Hi, I am Matt Marquez. Ms. Shearer gave us a pre-test on things we didn't even know. We had circle pictures that showed economic wants, scarcity, human resources, and some other stuff. I wasn't the only one who was confused. The average on the pre-test was 32%. At the end of the project, we took the test again. We scored an average of 97%. We grew 65%. One student scored 12% on the pre-test and 100% on the post-test. That was me. <laughs> After taking that hard test, Ms. Shear brought out some Dr. Seuss books that made us all feel better. I even had a lot of the books at home. Then she said we were going to do a project called Echoes and the Opics is on the loose with Dr. Seuss using these books. Hi, I'm Nehemiah Love. Miss Shear knows that kindergarten students have unlimited wants. I know I do, so we began our project with this concept. We read How the Grinch Stole Christmas and named some of the wants in the story. We worked in small groups and cut out some of our wants. I wanted a remote control monster truck. We even worked at home to find out some of our family's economic wants. My family wanted a new house. After learning about goods and services, we got to produce goods and services at home. I produced a cookie that was good. Hi, I am Aubrey Sane. After reading Green Eggs and Ham, we produced Green Eggs and Ham. This was the best. We looked at bags of capital goods and named the human resource that would use these goods while doing their job. Each each of us produced a human resource, had a home that showed what we would like to be when we grew up. We, looked, we had to include capital goods and natural resources used by, used by the human resource. These were shared with the class. I wanted to be a doctor. Some of my capital goods were Dr. Bannon, a stethoscope. Hi, I'm Gracie Faulkner. We learned that the snitches had trouble making a choice when they were on the beach. We also had trouble when we had to choose among six different items that we could use for outdoor play. The, these were sidewalk chalk, hula hoops, balance sports, jump ropes, beanbag toss, or bubbles. We were told to choose <coughs> two of these and wrote them on tar chart paper. Then Ms. Shear said that we only had time to do one item. We circled our choice, the one we wanted, and X'd out our opportunity cost, the one we gave up. After learning all these economics concepts, we made individual economic journals. We defined, explained, and illustrated each one. Human resources brought economics into our classroom. We got to climb on a fire truck and try on some of their equipment. We named it the capital goods used by a dentist. Economics in a bag was a fun activity that we did at home. We took home a book, read it with our families, answered questions about the economics in the book, and connected the economics to our lives. We earned dollars for each one completed and traded these for goods at, for, at the class market. Do you know that the book, The Lorax, has a lot of economic concepts in it? We do. The truffle trees are natural resources. A needle is a good that everyone wanted. When the last truffle tree that was chopped down, there was a scarcity. 
Economics was fun and we really learned a lot. Did my students learn economics? They did. Did they have fun? Yes, they did. I wanted all my kids to understand that they lead economic lives and that by, waking, by making wise decisions, this will affect their lives. I also wanted them to understand the important role that they play in our global economy. I want to thank Economics Arkansas for believing in me that I can teach economics. Thank you for the sponsors who provided the funds for the economic grant that I had won and that provided me with the funds I needed to buy the goods to teach my project. I want to, I totally believe in teaching economics to students. I've been doing it for 21 years for kindergarten students and I believe that it needs to be in every grade level in all the curriculum. So, I speak for the teachers, I speak for us all. We will teach economics to students no matter how small. They will learn to make choices and think of the cost. When they make wise decisions, there's, there's nothing they will, that is lost. We increase our human capital each day at school. Learning economics has proven to be cool. So, just like the Lorax who speaks for the trees, the teachers at economics speak for economies. <laughs> <laughs> my audience here. So we as the teachers, we hold these future decision makers in our hands and when we teach them economics, they will be the best in the land. Thank you. Ooh, that was awesome. You all did fabulous. Thank you so much. I now have another superstar educator coming with her students, Susie Thompson from Little Rock Christian Academy. And with her are Spencer Burton, Ashlyn Underwood, Robert Thompson, and Sharon Amol. Hello everyone. My name is Ashlyn Underwood and I'm a junior at Little Rock Christian Academy and I intend on majoring in accounting and business. The lessons learned in my economics class this year have greatly expanded my understanding of the business environment and the hands-on activities learned by my teacher, Ms. Thompson, from the Economics Arkansas seminars and workshops have supplemented our curriculum well. Um, the impact of the Economics Arkansas activities can definitely be seen in my life because I got first place in the District Future Business Leaders of America competition in economics, and I got fifth place in the statewide competition. The lessons I've learned from the Economics Arkansas activities will stay with me as I enter a career in the business field and have helped me go to the national BLA competition. Good afternoon, my name is Spencer Burton, and uh, it's hard to follow up a cute presentation like that. <laughs> but I'm a, a junior at Little Rock Christian Academy as well, and uh, I've been privileged the last four semesters to participate in the Economics Arkansas stock market game. And actually last fall, my team placed second in the state game. And while some may say playing just a 10 week short game like this is luck, what isn't luck are the lessons I've learned while participating. To show evidence of this, uh, I recently placed first in both district and state of an, a Future Business Leaders of America competitive event called Securities and Investments. Uh, I know that playing the Economics Arkansas stock market game and discussing the market daily with Ms. Thompson were some of the reasons I was able to achieve this goal. Thank you very much Economics Arkansas and its sponsors and a very great thank you to the Ford family. Hello, I'm Sharon Amole, and I am currently a 10th grader at Little Rock Christian. I attend our economics class. However, it is only for juniors, but I was able to attend under special permission. I promised my teacher that I would work hard and be careful not to fall behind the upperclassmen. And thanks to the activities given to us by Econ Arkansas, I was able to understand the concepts better and follow up all of the education that I have been provided. I would like to thank Econ Arkansas for providing us this opportunity and have a great day.
Thank you to Ms. Owens and Economics Arkansas for inviting us here. I am Robert Thompson and I am a junior at Little Rock Christian Academy. One of the fantastic programs done by Economics Arkansas is the Capitol Hill Challenge. And the Capitol Hill Challenge is where students are teamed with members of Congress and play the stock market game. Last year I was in a team with Congressman Tim Griffin and we ended up fifth in the, uh, fifth in the nation, over 15,000 students and we won a trip to Washington, D.C., where we got to visit a D.C. House of Investments and meet up with the director of Morgan Stanley and go to attend an awards ceremony with members of Congress at the Capitol. Wow, it was, it was such a good experience meeting all those high up people up in Morgan Stanley. I'd like to thank you, Economics Arkansas and Miss Mas Marsha Masters for chaperoning us and helping us get to Washington, D.C. Well, thank you. I am Susie Thompson. I'm their teacher. And um, are y'all feeling the floor vibrating? Or I thought it was just me being nervous out there. But um, <laughs> anyway, um, thank you, Sue, and Economics Arkansas for this opportunity. When I saw the ad come up on the website with the Ford family and Dr. Arch Ford uh, with Scott and Joe Ford, it just clicked. I said, I didn't know they were even related. And I was so excited because the first training course I did with Economics Arkansas was at the Arch Ford Education Center. So I went on and read his history, and I was just so pumped, and I thought, this is way cool, as my students would say, uh, because that's where I learned about the stock market came, and then I had Joe in my accounting class, uh, the great-grandson of Dr. Arch, playing the game. So I thought that was really neat, and I will say Joe did real well. He um, went long on some uh, bull ETFs and shorted some bear ETFs, which makes a bull, and anyway, he did real well. Um, <laughs> So I sent a little email to Sue and I said, could I please come, you know, and so I was thinking I'd just get to sit back there and eat and enjoy it. And so she called me and said, uh, yes, I'm sure there'll be room, but would you like to speak if you come and bring some students to speak? So um, that's a good example of an economic concept called Tanstaffle. There ain't no such thing as a free lunch, <laughs> which I know you all know because I know how much it costs for each of you to come. Um, I will say Arkansas, I'm just so passionate about Arkansas. I mean, Arkansas is great. We've got diamonds, chickens, trout fishing, rice, Walmart, horse racing, coffee, uh, lotion golf, the best golf, uh, trucks and ducks. We have so many resources, but one of the resources a lot of people don't know about is economic Arkansas. And I think that's one of our best resources. Um, I was a CPA, uh, graduated and became a CPA, and worked for one of the big eight accounting firms back when they had big eight. Luckily, I was with that Arthur firm that didn't go bankrupt with Enron. Um, and when I left that and started teaching school, I had great textbooks and I had my experiences. I needed that something extra to make economic classes fun for my students. And that extra thing was Economics Arkansas. Someone introduced them to me. And as you've heard from these students, I've used the stock market game, the personal finance challenge, the economic challenge, the Capitol Hill challenge, the invest uh, right essay contest, summer training courses, classroom activities. Uh, and even though Nathaniel Hawthorne says economics and art are strangers, I think he's wrong because you'll see in just a minute that economics and arts are not strangers. One of the best courses I've been to was at Crystal Bridges that they sponsored, and it was economics and the arts and had a PhD from Purdue come. It just covers all realms. Um, no offense, but um, Lawrence Peter once said, an economist is an expert who will know tomorrow why the things he predicted yesterday didn't happen today. Well, I will say about Economics Arkansas, they are experts who will know tomorrow and be able to tell you why the things they planned yesterday were totally successful today. They're some of the hardest group that I know. I, I've bumped into one time in the summer, I was at Walmart like 6.30 in the morning, don't ask me why I was there that early, but uh, Marcia was there gathering goods and supplies because she was getting ready to drive to rural Arkansas in the summer and hold a course to teach those teachers some of these fabulous Economics Arkansas things. When you invest in Economics Arkansas, it is the return on investment, compound return, because the teachers are teaching these kids, they're gonna grow up and teach their kids, and it just is going to balloon. And Arkansas is just gonna to continue to be one of the leading economic educated states around. To hear a real life story, this is a couple semesters ago, one of my girl students 
we were starting the stock market game, and she said, Miss Thompson, I'm just not good with numbers. I'm just not good with it. I'm just going to have to marry somebody that understands business and money. Well, I put her on a team, and her team did pretty well. So by the end of it, she said, you know what, Miss Thompson, this is not so bad. I think I'll do okay with this. Now I can just marry for love, <laughs> which is a good reason to marry. I'm very passionate about this group. I love them dearly. Winston Churchill once said, we make a living by what we get. We make a life by what we give. So I want to encourage you. If you're not on their list of giving, I encourage you to get on it. Thank you very much. So now you understand how Sue works this board. Hauls a bunch of kids in, gets everybody crying, you know, talking about the mission. She's the first to tear up. And then if you've never watched a room full of old guys like me trying to discreetly wipe our eyes without looking like total wusses, it's really entertaining. Who can follow that act except the governor? It's my privilege to introduce uh, Governor Asa Hutchinson. When he first started his campaign and since he's been sworn in and has now served, what, the first several months in his term, I've been keeping a weather eye on him in terms of economic development activities, and I must tell you, this guy gets it. So please join me in welcoming the governor of the great state of Arkansas, Asa Hutchinson. Thank you. Randy, try not to get choked up as I talk. <laughs> and you're right, uh, it's inspiring to see these young kids, students that understand the importance of economic education. I love the teacher who remarked, Arkan Arkansas needs to continue to lead in economic education. And to be successful, whether it's in education or whether it is in business, we all need inspiration in life. People need inspiration. And in Arkansas, we need inspiration, and we have inspiration through the legacy of the Ford family. It's my privilege just to be here for a few minutes to express my gratitude and appreciation for the leadership of the Ford family uh, in education, in public service, and in free enterprise. And it's really all three of those that reflect the values of that incredible legacy. Commitment to education, understanding the importance of education, starting economic education in this state. But it's also the commitment to public service that we see through their lives, not just in elected office, as Joe Ford has demonstrated. Has the legislature changed any, Joe? A lot. <laughs> Uh, Joe has had that experience, but public service is rendered in so many different ways, reflected in Scott Ford's, Ford's life as well. You know, success in life can bring a lot of different attitudes, but what success in life has brought to the Ford family has been a renewed commitment to public service and to making a difference in the lives of individuals. To me, that is stewardship and they have been great stewards of success. And to me, that is the hallmark of greatness. And if I ever want to be inspired, I go see someone in the Ford family. Uh, they inspire me in terms of public service. They inspire me uh, in terms of the free enterprise system. If you want a quick lecture on the oligarchy of economic lack of freedom in Rwanda, go see Scott. Uh, and it's, it's inspiring to understand that commitment and the difference it makes in the lives of individuals. So thank you, Scott. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for your legacy and your commitment to Arkansas. And I hope that you will continue to inspire, as I know that you will. Thank you very much, Governor. And now I have the 
next task of introducing yet another person who needs no introduction to this group, so I'm not going to uh, belabor the point with a uh, recounting of his bio, but I would like to say that, that we're very pleased to have Warren Stevens speak today on this subject. I think, uh, first of all, the relationship with the Ford family is an enormous part of his uh, opportunity, as he knows, but also um, Warren's success and, and the grace with which he bears it uh, is really uh, inspiring. You, have, you don't have to look around town very far to see the Stevens name, as we all know just a building or two over, as a matter of fact. Um, the Med Center, uh, the, the Altel, I mean the uh, uh, campus at UALR, uh, just time after time after time, gift after gift, uh, contribution after contribution. And the leadership of, of one of the largest investment banking firms in, in America today. Uh, and it's a great privilege now to introduce to you our keynote speaker, Warren Stevens. I'm not sure you need a keynote speaker after all the students and the governor get up here and uh, uh, explain what Economics Arkansas does and what a great job, what a great job it does. Um, I leaned over and I told Scott, uh, the state of Arkansas is, is ahead of where Dartmouth College was when my son went there, who was then going to go to work at Lehman Brothers, and I said, well, you need to get over and take some accounting. and economics classes and and Dartmouth has a wonderful business school and uh, he said well I, I can't I said what and he said they don't offer that to undergraduates and I actually talked to the then president about it and I said you know um, you're you're graduating illiterate people um, I don't care what their field is if they don't have the basics of economics and accounting uh, they're illiterate. They, I don't know how they're going to function in, in the world. And um, by golly, they now have that. And it is, <laughs> it, is, it is incredibly popular, and I didn't have to pay anything for it other than my tuition, I guess, for our son to, son to go there. But it was an honor to, to be asked to, to do this today. Um, Scott, Joe, um, and Arch, are, and the Ford family are obviously very close friends of, of our family for years. Um, I, I really, it was a daunting task, is how, how could I possibly acknowledge all the contributions of the Ford family and their impact on economics and free enterprise in Arkansas, this country, and, and indeed the world? Um, but I'm going to give it a shot. And, you know, it helps that the Stevens and Ford families have been business partners and friends for almost 70 years. Uh, Joe Ford has been a friend and mentor to me, just like my father was a friend and mentor to both Joe and Scott. Uh, the philosophies of Joe and Scott and their resulting success, successes have literally changed and improved communities and lives across this country and throughout the world. There are several copies around the Stevens offices of the book, The Legend of Altel, one of which is in my office. And when I opened the copy, when I opened my copy, inscribed on the title page was a note dated May 1st, 2001. And the note said, quote, Jack, without you, none of this would have happened. With appreciation, gratitude, and love for a wonderful person and friend, Joe Ford. And when I turned the page, there was a forward written by my father. He tells the story about a December morning in 1958 when a young man dropped by his office without an appointment. The young man who was about to graduate from college said he didn't have any money and he needed to know what he should do to be successful. I guess dad said come on in and they had a cup of coffee and, and, a, and a nice visit. I've really never heard the details of what happened after that. But it, it started a friendship that lasted a lifetime and has lasted a lifetime because that young man was Joe Ford. Dad said he didn't see Joe again for four years. Joe came back in 1962. He would graduated from college, spent some time in the Army, sold advertisements for the Yellow Pages as we heard, and was currently a salesman for a little company called Allied Telephone. Joe told Dad that Allied could grow but it needed some new capital. 
And Dad asked how much Joe told him, and Dad invested in Allied Telephone. Dad called it one of his most profitable investments he ever made. However, he wasn't, it wasn't just profitable in terms of dollars. It was a business partnership that was enriched by a lifelong friendship. Scott, For Scott Ford worked for Dad for 10 years after college and a brief stint at a Wall Street firm. Dad's, Dad often said that Scott taught him as much as he taught Scott. And when Scott took over Alltel, it was already a very successful company. He took it even higher. Joe and Scott changed many lives and communities with their stewardship of Alltel. The generosity of the Ford family continues to impact area schools, hospitals, and other recipients of not only their monetary gifts, but their time as well. Some of their gifts are public. The Fords have been longtime supporters of UAMS, and of course Scott gave a tremendous gift to Arkansas Baptist College. I know for a fact that both of these, these gifts have inspired others to give to both of these institutions. Witness the announcement in today's Arkansas Democrat Gazette of the opening of the Scott Ford Center for Entrepreneurship and Community Development at Arkansas Baptist College. That money came from private, do private donors not named Ford or Stevens for that matter. People like to support their friends and attracting donors and private money to help the college grow and succeed is another example of the Ford family leadership. Yet I can assure you that you and I do not know the full extent, the full extent of their philanthropy. That is how the Fords want it but the impact will be felt by generations of people to come. Now, most of us know the story of Allied Telephone and later Alltel. <clears throat> Still a few facts and figures need to be recited in order to properly appreciate their impact. Some of you may not know, but Charles Miller and Hugh Wilburn Jr. bought their first telephone assets from my Uncle Witt. My uncle owned the telephone exchange in Sheridan, Arkansas for the simple reason he had gotten tired of not being able to call his parents in Prattsville, which is just outside of town. So he bought the exchange and ran a line out to their home. <laughs> Mr. Miller and Mr. Wilburn had a company that worked on and repaired phone equipment, and Sheridan was one of their clients. As that system became more antiquated, they didn't think they could continue to service it. And when they told my uncle, when they told my uncle, Witt knew he had a problem on his hands. Before they could leave his office, he had agreed to sell them the Sheridan Exchange and he would take 100% of the purchase price in a note they could pay off over time. Now, we're fond of telling people from outside the state that Arkansas is really the center of the universe. But perhaps we ought to add that Grant County may be the center of central Arkansas, as Allied Telephone, Altel, and Stevens, Inc. have strong roots there. But by the time Altel Wireless sold to Verizon, they served 34 states and had 13 million subscribers. They also had the largest geographical cellular network in the country. Verizon runs ads that show in red how much of the country their, their cellular network covers. And I smile every time I see it because the vast majority of the, of the red you see was in fact Altel's network. Quite a long and I might add profitable way from Sheridan. Of course, let's not forget that the story still continues today in Windstream, as well as the publicly traded Real Estate Investment Trust communications, communications sales and trading that actually started trading this week. So this chapter, the final chapter of Altel, has yet to be, has yet to be written. Today, the Ford's economic leadership continues in the form of their company, West Rock Capital, a private equity investment group, and an international startup. West Rock Coffee. I've heard Scott quoted as saying only his father and his wife stood by him when he started the coffee business in 2009. The passion that started as quote charity work in Rwanda has turned into an incredibly successful business both for West Rock and the people of Rwanda. Over the past six years West Rock Coffee has put upwards of a hundred million dollars directly into the, into the pockets of Rwanda coffee farmers who in turn use that money for educational and nutritional advances for their children. 
In a recent U.S. Senate hearing in Washington that was alluded to earlier, Scott testified that if you help underprivileged people taste the success of the free market, they will never go back to anything else. With Scott's vision and Joe's support, West Rock Coffee has already been a big success on an international and humanitarian stage, and where it goes is going to be fun to watch. Joe Ford summed up his management style this way, and I quote, I look at business as a people-to-people -people thing, honesty, integrity, respect, and I do business on that basis, end quote. That is how you successfully grow from Sheridan, Arkansas to a multi-billion dollar company with tens of thousands of employees. And that brings us to why we're here today, to honor these two men for their leadership in free enterprise. As many of you know, in the video we just saw so eloquently explained, Economics Arkansas, as it exists today, was the brainchild of Dr. Arch Ford, the Education Commissioner of Arkansas, father of Joe, grandfather of Scott. When Joe was on the verge of graduating from college, he told his father he had taken some economic courses that were incredibly valuable to him, and perhaps every student in Arkansas ought to have a basis in economics. As we know from the video, Commissioner Ford took that idea and with Bessie Moore, turned it into the Arkansas State Council on Economic Education, now Economics Arkansas. Economics, as we have seen, Economics Arkansas works with teachers from across the state in developing plans and material for all grades, K through 12. As a result of Joe's suggestion and his father's leadership, all high school graduates in Arkansas are required to have one semester of economics on their transcript. Last year, 30,000 students graduated high school in Arkansas and were the first to meet that standard. Next month, another 30,000 will graduate with some background in the fundamentals of economic principles. It's a big plus for the students, and it's a great move for the state of Arkansas. And it all started with an idea and a comment from Joe to his father, somewhat like West Rock, West Rock and just like Altel. It is only fitting that, we, that today we stand here honoring the legacies of Arch Ford, two, fine, two shining examples of what hard work and free markets can do to make the world a better place. In a 1953 newspaper article about Arch Ford, one of his colleagues in education said this about him, and I quote, he has a keen intellect and his friends are limited only by the number of people with whom he has come in contact, end quote. Another one said, he doesn't make a lot of noise, but he does make a lot of headway. And that's the end of that quote. But these comments were about Arch Ford. But the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. They could just as easy, easily describe the lives and successes of Joe and Scott Ford. Thank you for honoring them. It's been a privilege for me to play a small part in it. Let me call up uh, Kayla Huffstetter and Kate Gladden from Little Rock Christian for a presentation to Warren. Warren, let's step over here. In case you can't see what it is, it's a bull and a bear, appropriate for Warren, with a graph um, charting the uh, ever upward spiral of the U.S. stock market. I would now like to invite Caitlin Johnson, a student in the El Dorado School District, and her teacher, Helene Lambert, to the stage. Students across state, the state were commissioned to create this award based on one of our programs, the Economics and Art Calendar Program. Caitlin's work of art was selected to become the Leadership and Free Enterprise Award honoring the Ford family. So on behalf of Economics Arkansas, we present this award to honor the legacy of your father, Arch Ford, who had the vision for an economically literate state by creating our organization. And to both of you, Scott and Joe, 
for the deep impact you have made on the state of Arkansas and beyond as leaders of free enterprise. Uh, David and Randy and Sue and uh, directors and officers of Economic Arkansas, thank you. Governor, thank you very much for your gracious words. Uh, they're greatly appreciated. And thank you for the nice job you're doing. And Dorothy, it's nice to see you. <laughs> thank you for all you did for my dad. Sponsors, thank you for contributing to this event which helps teachers teach economics to uh, students. I'm convinced it will pay dividends in the future, and so thank you for that. And Warren, thank you for your nice comments. Uh, when they talked to Scott and me about having a keynote speaker, we looked at each other <laughs> and said, Warren Stevens, he knows us better than anybody. So Warren, thank you. Our family has done business with the Stevens family for right at a few months short of 70 years. That's relationship banking based on a handshake, a lifetime of friendship. And I think Warren, I think his dad Jack, I think his uncle Whit, and I think Whit Stevens who's sitting back here. So thank the Stevens family for that great relationship. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> I want to thank all the teachers and the educators. You know, Bessie Moore is really the, the mother of all this event, and some of you here knew Bessie. For those of you that did not, once Bessie was given a task, it's either get on board or get out of the way. And I knew when she took this over, it would be successful. So I commend Bessie for what is now Economic Arkansas. I thank all the teachers, the administrators, all the people involved in teaching students about economics. I'm convinced it'll have huge dividends in the future. Thank each of you for being here. We're grateful. How you doing? Wouldn't it be nice after a long lunch if some lucky kid just got up and said, hey, thanks for coming to lunch. It's been really great being with you. So at the end of it, people said to me all day, congratulations. I said, look, I was just born in line. This is the one that could have let go of the rope. But he persevered in a business that was so tough to get started. And why we're doing it again right now, I have no idea, but we are. And here's what I want to ask you. I'm going to save you a speech if you'll commit to me that you'll go to Kroger and buy a bag of West Rock coffee <laughs> in the 12-ounce bag or the 12-ounce box. Thanks very much. Well, that concludes this event. We appreciate you being here and appreciate you helping to celebrate this wonderful family. Thank you. <laughs>